Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and I'm Mama Loves You GB and this is the 11th of December, my Flossmas Advent. Or, as Karen Williams, husband apparently likes to call it, the morning briefing. So, uh, welcome to the morning briefing. I have got the usual mix of stuff to show you. So I've got thread advents, pass finishes and a freebie chart. I have also got some haul to show you. Um, as I said yesterday, I was going to go back to the little town that likes to do Wednesday closing because there was one shop that I particularly liked um, and so I did manage to bag a few really cute little things from there so I'm going to show you those. I'll leave those right to the end just in case that's not something that you're interested in but uh, lots of people mentioned that they quite like the more unusual finishing ideas so these will definitely give you a few more unusual finishing ideas. I also went I showed you this yesterday and I didn't actually say where it was from. It is from uh, the Really Wild Soap Company which are in St David's so not very far from me and I said that I'd picked this up yesterday and that if I didn't have a glowing face like a mermaid by the following day then I'd be taking it back. Well I am super pleased with this stuff. Um, I used it last night which is a, a sugar scrub I used it last night, that's why I've taken my plaster off and I've got my manky finger. Um, I used it last night and it was gorgeous. It smells divine. And this morning was the first morning in months that I've been able to use a liquid foundation without it sort of sticking. I'd had to switch to powder because, you know, when you put a liquid foundation on, if you've got any, any rough bits or any um, really dry bits, it kind of sticks. And so my my skin just felt glorious, and because so because I knew I was going back today, I actually went and picked up a couple more products. So this one is called the seaweed soothing gel, smoothing gel even. And so you put this on, and it kind of smooths out your skin. And I've tried it, and it really, really is nice. It's almost like a primer. And this one is the moisturising lotion, and again, they just smell out of this world so I'm going to link this company below because you know me I wouldn't recommend stuff that I don't think is good but I really like this stuff so I will link them below just in case you fancy um, giving them a try or you're in the St David's area one time you want to look them up. I am going to start with oh, I'm going to start with my freebie chart I think so this one is by Plum Street Samplers and this is something for you for February. Well it could be for any time really but this is something for February. So this is called a Valentine stocking. So for all of you that like those little blackbird stockings this is one which is quite similar. I think what I'll do is I'll just fold it there. But it's by Plum Street Samplers. So that's what it looks like. Just a beautiful kind of heart and leaf vine with 1815 at the top but you could change that for anything you could turn that into a date if you wanted to and then it's charted with one set of initials but the person who stitched this has actually managed to get two sets of initials on so that could be a really lovely little gift or something to commemorate um, a wedding anniversary yours or somebody else's and that's from Plum Street Samplers. It is 48 by 114, but really it's an evening's, an evening stitch, I should think. So something you could finish off quite quickly. So really cute little stocking idea there um, from Plum Street Samplers. So that's the freebie. I'm going to do my past finishes now while I remember what they are. First one I, I have shown you. The second one, I put on my Instagram, but I don't think I've ever showed it. Um, this is their song by Blackbird Designs. Um, it is an out of print chart. It's not one of the ones they've brought back as yet, but I know a lot of people have got their fingers crossed for this one. And I was lucky enough to have the chart and I don't have it anymore, I'm afraid. So um, this is stitched in the called for colors in mostly the cool four places because by the time I got down to the bottom here 
I was running short on a couple of colours and had more left of others so I switched some of the colours. So for example I think the 2020 is stitched in a slightly different colour and maybe you know just this little bit of uh, this little bit of finery down the bottom there is stitched in a, a slightly different colour but I'm really pleased with it overall and I found this frame it's stitched on 32 count legacy by picture this plus and I want to say this is a I'd say it's an 8 by 10 frame actually so on 32 count it fits perfectly into an 8 by 10 I was really super happy with that I framed that one myself nothing too much could go wrong with that one because it just fits so so perfectly so that's my my first finish for today and this is my second finish um, so this one is by with thy needle and thread and it's called I collect and it was again part of my button mania um, and here it is now it's going to give me a bit of a glare off those buttons so I'm sure you've seen this one I've stuffed mine with loads of walnut crystals so it's got these lovely scissors, a little cotton reel, the tomato, some more tomatoes up here, another cotton reel up here and then it says collector along the bottom. Now mine is stitched on a 32 count, maybe if I come down on this corner you might see it better, um, a 32 count lakeside linen but I bought it in a D-stash and it didn't have the colour with it um, and I don't know enough about lakeside to be able to tell you what colour it is but it's a, a sort of a warm beige I would say more of a sandy beige and I really like mother of pearl buttons and collecting mother of pearl buttons so I just chose a selection of mother of pearl buttons out of my box some are kind of the greyer ones some of the whiter ones all sorts of different shapes and the only thing that's missing is two long black headed pins that go there that I don't have that I'll I'll pick up at some point if I see some and I decided to stitch the cotton reels in satin stitch and what I did was when I was making it into a pillow I actually put the iron on lining on the back of the pillow before I put the buttons on and before I sewed the satin stitch because I knew I was going to do it into a pillow and I just wanted the satin stitch to have that kind of thicker um, thicker backing to it so it almost laid just a little bit a little bit flatter there um, just backed in a red a red check it's the same red check that is on the back of the, the one that I showed you the other day which is called North Wind by the sampler Oh, Silver Creek samplers. And then it's just got kind of like a furry bobble trim around the outside, which I actually just glued on. Um, the Aileen's glue is really, really good. It sticks really well and it still has, it's not crunchy, it's not crispy, so it's still got that movement for your pillows, so it's not going to sort of stand completely square if you've got it sat in a bowl or on a shelf somewhere so I really enjoyed that one again it was a pretty quick stitch probably two days because there's not that much actual stitching to it and I use the cooled four colours for that except for the grey which is the the jar because I didn't have that grey but for this it didn't really it didn't really matter so those are my two I just hold them up together in the hope of getting another good um, screenshot so those are my two past finishes from this year and lastly then before we look at the um, interesting haul I'm gonna do my my advents I've got all my advent colors on here including the extra two that I, that I bagged from yesterday so door number 11 is down here and as of tomorrow we start on the other side of the house so there we go. Ooh, another red. Lancaster red. So this is a really, really nice sort of a darker 
a darker red. Now I actually heard from the lady who picked these colours, pick some of the colours, when I said about the Buckeye Scarlet yesterday, she messaged me and she said, yeah, I wanted you to have a proper red. <laughs> Did you have a proper red? So that was my Buckeye Scarlet from yesterday. In fact, it might be nice just to look at those two together, might next. There's so many reds. So many reds. And for those of you, you know, maybe you wanted to do like a red sampler or something, this might be quite interesting. So if I get... Ooh, look what's got red stitching on it. It's almost as if these things are planned, you know. They're not. So, let's put these two together. So yeah, if you were doing a red sampler, that's the Buckeye Scarlet, and that's the Lancaster Red, which in this light is looking more brown. But it is more of what I would call like a true burgundy, something like that. Looks like a, a red wine from what I can see in this light anyway. So there's those two there, just in case you were in the market for a red or a red sampler. So if you don't want to see my haul from today, then cheerio. <laughs> Thanks for visiting along with me. If you're interested to see what I what I snagged, then I will show you now. The first thing I've got isn't really a stitchy related thing, but I had to have it. So this is this shop that I went to is um, it's it's a vintage shop, so it's not an antique shop. There's a few things which are kind of newer mixed in, but it's still got that that sort of vibe. Um, and I just really like, really like the aesthetic that's in there. The first thing I got is an older piece, I know. Um, and it's this. So this is a papier mache box and it's got a Santa on it. And I think it has yellowed a bit with age, but the one thing that really interests me is that the Santa has got skulls in his pocket. And just on the side, it's got just little Christmas trees. And on the bottom, it's got a label. And the label looks like continental handwriting. Um, so it's numbers rather than any writing, but it looks like um, those, sort of, those sort of numbers that you quite often see um, on Russian posts, um, I mean posts, I mean like postal service things, the things that I've had from Russia, sometimes that have had a handwritten um, label on it, reminds me of those types of numbers. Um, so if anybody knows anything about the story, it makes me think that there's some kind of story behind this, why Father Christmas is there with some skulls in his pocket, I'd really love to know. Um, so this is just, just a decorative piece. I've got two other little decorative pieces. Now these were a pound each. And you were darn right they were coming home with me. These aren't old, I know they're not old, but they are just little decorative pieces. Just little, little tea light holders, little metal tea light holders, just to go on the mantelpiece for this time of year. A pound each, superb. I was so happy to grab those. Now the rest, all do have kind of a, a stitching related idea behind them. I will show you the first one because the first one's the most obvious one. I got a pair of little bobbins. Now this didn't come with it but I've put this on to show you what I mean so that those of you um, who haven't maybe used this this type of banding before know what I'm talking about. So two little bobbins, they're probably about three inches tall, got a fair old spike on the top of those, so I'm guessing on the machine they, they would have been sat that way up. Um, so they're beautiful yellow. Now this is the idea, now my banding, I haven't ironed it, and so what you can do is do 
either just one really really small piece or if you wanted a really nice long piece you would just stitch your piece and then just wrap it up so that could be like the, the full name of someone special maybe their year of birth their year of death their place of birth whatever you wanted on there or you could just do a series of motifs taken from uh, different different samplers that you like there's so many different little things little motifs that would go on there um, and so that is just a little bit of um, a little bit of linen banding I would say without getting a ruler out it's two inch banding and usually banding unless you get some really specialized stuff usually banding is sort of either 28 or 27 28 or 30 count you can get some really nice banding from a company called Vorpal and Helen Beck but not many people sell them um, and they do a 36 count banding which is really really nice but I've not managed to spring for any of that yet so that was my first bit of haul my second bit of haul was this an older maybe older it looks a oldish um, ceramic rolling pin now I took this out of the bag and the first thing my partner did was oh pastry you bought me a new pastry rolling pin I'm like no that is mine hands off and the reason I liked it was because it had such a clean white band to it so my idea would be to stitch something again on banding I've got this thing about banding um, or on a uh, a piece and turn it into just wrap it round and and sew it in at the back and then because I really like different heights in my sort of display pieces if you had a trug or a, a pot you just pop that in and then your piece would be poking out the top just a little bit higher um, so you could you could do that with loads of different rolling pins and things like that but I particularly like this one because of the ceramic um, middle to it I thought it was just a really nice backing really for a, a stitched piece so that was my rolling pin this one I don't really know much about this I don't know if it's a um, simply a decorative item I don't really know how old it is but I really liked it it's based on a chapati rolling pin and I'm presuming with all those colours on that it's not one that would be used, it's more of a decorative one. And again, I don't really know how old it is, but that doesn't matter to me, that really doesn't matter. So with this, you could put the linen banding around the middle, use it like a bobbin. But what I probably would do is mount it on the wall and I would probably just hang things from it because it's so attractive with those colours I love it I would just yeah, mount it on the wall and hang things from it five pounds amazing um, these I picked these up a set of pastry cutters for two pounds I think I'm going to do something a bit controversial with these I'm going to cut pastry with these. <laughs> um, we, I've got pastry cutters, but I really want that big one. I want to make some giant mince pies. Love a mince pie. So um, yeah, I'm not sure they're going to get used in stitching, but you definitely could. You could easily make circular things to go inside these and have them displayed however you wanted. That could be a really good base for a... Um, a stitched piece a little pin cushion something like that and this has got one two three four five six sizes and I'm sure you can pick these up anywhere and everywhere and this is my last piece now it this will end up on a stitchy related piece but it may just be with it rather than rather than on it or around it and so I picked up this little gavel and it's a really really nice gavel my dad was a livestock auctioneer and here you go get a gavel in my hand first thing I do bang it on the hand 
he was a livestock auctioneer and an antiques auctioneer and he passed away in uh, 2009 so 11 years ago which seems like a blink of an eye and he had a few gavels I've still got his nice rosewood gavel and so every time I see a gavel I tend to pick it up it's a bit like save the gavels and what I will probably do with this is Plum Street Samplers have got a really nice piece that I have got the pattern for but I've not started stitching which is called um, I think it's called the gentleman's daughter it's got a big house on the front with a man and then a girl stood next to it and it says he is a gentleman and I am a gentleman's daughter and so we are equal or something along those lines and I've always wanted to do that so what I would probably do is I would stitch that piece have it really nicely framed in something that would match this gavel and I probably would just sit the gavel on top of the frame just like that and just have that in my in my house so that might be a 2021 project for me in other news we had an email today well we had an email after there had been an announcement on the television that the Education Secretary and the Welsh Government have decided that for secondary schools tomorrow, well today for you, tomorrow for me filming it right now, so basically Friday the 11th, will be the last day of face-to-face -face teaching for this year. Uh, after being told on probably Monday, categorically by Carmarthenshire County Council, that we were going to go till the 18th, they made um, a decision, countrywide decision today, which says that as of Monday, we will be doing the last week from remote schooling because of the numbers, um, the COVID numbers that we've got at the moment. It is what it is. I just feel so sorry for the students because, again, it just feels like the rug's been pulled out from underneath them, all the nice Christmassy things that we would usually do. And I know a lot of them have been not cancelled. We've done our best to try and swap things around, but now they really have been um been cancelled so that kind of nice run up to Christmas that we get by doing the things that are Christmassy to us um, they're not going to get this year but they do get to be safe so yeah looks like well I, I might be working from school or from home we wait to see what they're going to do about the teachers in the secondary schools um, from tomorrow so I will let you know but I hope that you liked my little haul and it encourages you to just go and look at things just a little bit differently and say, can I use that in my stitching? You shall see. Stay classy, stitchers.